looking at you, and I found myself thinking about the fact that this university got dreamed into being by a land grant act in the middle of the 1850s based on an idea that public education ought not to be only for the rich, by the rich, and to the rich, but it was possible that there could be great public institutions that would allow education to everybody in the society who wanted access. And when we were chanting, our university, I was found by a little voice in the back of my head saying, you know, it's their university too. It's the university of the people of California, the taxpayers of California, the working people of California, who imagined and built this place for 150 years. biology labs in San Diego, and they made the phenology labs in Davis, and they made the Greek and Latin classics classrooms here, and the East Asian library here, and, the stuff, and they built Santa Cruz, and they built uh, all of the campuses of the university and the state college system. And they've been sleepwalking for a generation and letting this patrimony get wasted. And we're feeling the effects of it now, which is one of the reasons we're here. I find myself thinking about two particular effects that have caused this. One, or one is the growing income gap, the growing inequality gap in the society. Solutions are complicated, but there's one sure solution, and that is disciplined, militant, well-organized labor unions to fight for the rights of working people and to raise wages and begin to take it back. And the second has to do with what's happened with education and maybe with the failure of some of us of my age and generation not, not, to, have made, not to have made the case better. It is their university. It's the, it's, the, it's the university of the people of California if they want to pay for it. I think about Abraham Lincoln saying in the Gettysburg Address that this was a country constituted the proposition that all men were created equal. Smart man. He said it was a proposition. In practice, it means two things. Equality before the law, which we don't have in this country, and equality of access to education, which we don't have in this country. <laughs> and insofar as we have it, we're in danger of letting it go. And we've got to find ways to address that. One of the ways to address that is to deal with the legal system in California. It, it, when Proposition 13 was created, In average classroom size, average amount of money spent on each student, and average salary for teachers, California was either first, second, or third in the union. By the middle of the 1990s, it only ranked above Mississippi and Louisiana in the amount of money it was spending per child in the classroom. And every year, tuition for students in this dream of a public university system was increasing and the amount of public investment in the system that the, the, the people of California worked for and, and made uh, was, was declining. And that has to be addressed and it's got to be addressed with the energy and spirit that's here. This means, for one thing, retail politics, guys and girls. If you don't know who your assembly person is or your state senator is, and you haven't said to your parents, you've got to go talk to them, you've got to badger their aid, you've got to talk to them about what's happening, the possibility of a free public education system in this country, the best in the country, being squandered, you have to get to them. And we've got to address the inability of, uh, of the legislature to even move on any of these issues. We do have a budget crisis. We have a deep budget crisis, and there are historical reasons for it in those same tax laws that create public education. In just a minute, George Lakoff is going to say a word to you about what you can do to address that with the same energy you're bringing here today. There's 
a, a great American short story writer named Larry O'Connor, and someone asked her why she wrote the weird story she did, and she said, because to the hard of hearing you have to shout, and for the almost blind you need to draw large and startling pictures. Let's hope this is one. Thanks.